Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. We've got a suitcase in for review today, so that's uh, a little bit different. No, this isn't a hard drive or an SSD suitcase, and it's not even one of those ruggedized uh, HCI environments to take on the road with you. But it is still interesting nonetheless. Actually, this came inside a giant box uh, about a week and a half ago that I had no idea what was inside. I thought it was Kevin's stash of Doritos, so I opened it up to see what was inside, and voila, a suitcase was revealed. Now, this is, though, from our friends over at AMD, AMD Epic. They've gone, uh, not quite whole hog, they've gone quarter hog on their, their promotion around uh, the new CPUs that we've got inside. Of course, everyone knows Epic and the second gen ROM processors are what AMD is putting out there for the server market. We've seen a number of servers roll through, most recently uh, Lenovo Single Proc and the SR635. Uh, we've got a Gigabyte Dual Proc system, we've got an HPE system, we've got a lot of systems around that have largely been Single Proc for the uh, AMD servers. And AMD has done really well over the, the course of the last six months to continue to expand the line. So we've got CPUs, I thought they were over there, they must have gone away to a server, uh, that have come in the flat pack trays that are for the high-end use cases. 64 cores really blasting all you can at these from high-performance servers for all sorts of workloads ranging from HPC to transactional database. But they also have a number of CPUs at the lower end where the core counts might be lower, but there's a higher clock, uh, base clock speed in addition to uh, different configurations of cache. So what we have today, let's just get at it so we can see is, okay, so talking about quarter hog, complete missed opportunity here. There could have been at least 12 candy canes inside this, and that would have really set these processors aside. I don't know if it would give you an extra full gigahertz, but probably 12 candy canes is worth at least, at least 0.4 gigahertz in, in, in speed. So we're gonna give that up, maybe some crackers in there, a little hummus cup or something. Sadly, we get none of that. We'll take the foam away, and inside, I'll let you take a look at this. We've got a nice uh, promotional piece here and two of these processors, AMD Epic 7F52. These are retail packaging, which is kind of unusual for us. We're used to getting the flat pack trays that would come uh, straight out of the fab. And uh, we've got the back of the chip there that says 7F52 on there. So that's pretty neat. We've got two of these. So we'll be able to run these in any of our dual proc systems, and of course we can use one in a, in a single proc system. Now these are the 16 core, and so if we look at just quickly what's available today, so we're a little ahead of this launch, um, 8 core, they've got a couple SKUs that top out at 3.2 and 128 of cache. 16 core, which is our guys, currently are topping out at uh, 3 gigahertz and 128 megabytes of cache. And then there's a 24 core offering in this family uh, as well that currently they top out at 2.8 and 128. So why don't we take a look at uh, the slide deck. Now, so this is from the presentation that media and analysts received, and this is the easiest way, I think, to quickly visualize what AMD has done here. So like I said, we've got the 16 cores that now top out at 3.5 with 256 megabytes of cache. The, uh, uh, the guys down here, the 24 core, top out at 3.2 gigahertz with 192 megabytes of cache, and then 3.7 gigahertz on the eight core with 128 megabytes of cache. If we think about how that compares to the families that they sit in, we've got uh, the prior models here that topped out at 2.8, so now we know that we've got uh, on the 24 core what we're dealing with, 16 and, and eight. So these are gonna be top bin SKUs for all of those uh, taking over uh, in the 8, 16, and 24 core areas, respectively. Now, some applications will really make, uh, really make some good hay of having that extra clock speed to throw. And this is, again, not a giant release for, for AMD, despite the candy cane-less suitcase, but it is an enhancement of their portfolio. It shows that they're continuing to develop these uh, CPUs, that they're listening to their customers, most importantly, about what their applications need, uh, Nutanix is on here as a partner, Supermicro, a couple cloud providers that are seeing the need for this type of SKU specifically for the workloads that, that they're dealing with. What we're going to do is go ahead and put these in some of our servers, take a look at their capabilities, and uh, see what we can get out of these things.
All right, so while it's a bit short of our full review, Kevin went ahead and took one of the two new processors and dropped it in our Gigabyte single processor system uh, for a number of reasons, both expediency related and the fact that we have a good set of comparable data from the previous top bin, right? C16 core. Yeah, so when we were doing our original uh, Epic launch review, we were uh, messing around with the single proc systems. And with that, we had uh, two... 7302 processors, although 27302P processors. So we couldn't really compare it uh, direct head to head of a uh, single versus a dual proc config. So we just went single versus single. Um, and this processor sits right below the, um, the new one. So the new one offers a little more cache, a little more clock speed, and it, it fit in pretty well to uh, do our head to head comparison on. All right. So in the P, just as a reminder, is the SKU that's designed for single proc use, so you can't take two P's and put them into one pod of a server. Sadly, not yet. <laughs> okay. They're basically identical. I think uh -huh. it's just a like a hardware license. Right. right. So we we did a little bit of testing on here. What what do you see in terms of performance between the two uh, best possible compared, I guess, uh, CPUs? Well, it's faster. Uh, and That's it's, good because it yeah. should be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's subtly faster. You're not going to see a gigantic change, but uh, going from uh, the previous top in 16 core to the uh, new, uh, you gain, uh, what's that, about uh, 400 uh, transactions per second. So it edges it out slightly. Okay. And so the other thing you like to look at is the 99th percentile of latency, right? Yeah, and all, that area got uh, well, the biggest, more significant change. That uh, That's an area where average latency in uh, transactions per second will be incremental drops. Um, the 99th percentile, though, under load, uh, the faster it gets, the uh, faster the uh, number will shrink. Okay. And then if we look at the average latency, we drop just a teeny bit. Yeah, it's not, I mean, this isn't going from a 16 to a 24 or 64 core CPU. It's a clock speed change. Right, so this and, is the 16 to the better 16. Yes, so it gets better. Okay, and so you ran SQL Server as well. And this we see a lot where in the SQL Server test, the numbers, the total TPS number looked pretty much the same. Oh yeah, ben, I mean, it, it operates that way. Benchmark Factory runs a static load and basically it's a latency test. So in this case, if you saw something dramatically different, it would be more of a warning sign than anything else. Yeah, you'd have to have a dramatically slower, dramatically faster uh, processor to, uh, to have a, a bigger difference there. Okay, so let's check out the latency then. Now, latency in this area has a bigger uh, difference. The uh, new 7F52 with the higher clock speed, uh, it's an area where SQL Server tends to favor higher clock speeds. But this goes into why the processor exists. There are certain workloads that are still uh, that still benefit from higher clock uh, versus uh, just more aggregate cores. So there are certain areas where you, you can have certain benefits come in with a um, higher clock speed. Right, so that's an important thing to understand, and maybe even, and perhaps we should dig into this on, on the podcast sometime, but the uh, wide variety of CPUs from AMD and, and Intel, for that matter, are causing not quite infinite fragmentation, but a lot of fragmentation, and to understand what CPU is best might not just, it might not be the most expensive one. You know, there could be a different answer that's better. Yeah, and there's not a very workload as intuitive, which might end up being problematic for some customers since uh, you might not necessarily be able to know what you're getting into before you buy a processor. So you're going off of recommendations or just general rules of knowing, is does this uh, particular application handle multi-threaded uh, workloads or is it one where uh, things are tied into a, a single thread and clock speed wins? So. Okay, so that's the single processor testing. I know you're also hard at work on dual processor testing in another uh, gigabyte box with two of these guys in there. So we've got that we're working on. We've got some uh, AI workloads potentially. We've got all sorts of other fun stuff we're working on in the lab. Yeah, we're ramping up our uh, bare metal tests. I mean, we've been uh, primarily focused on uh, VMware for a long time, and there are a lot of cool workloads that have uh, been coming out. Oh, a lot of the workloads existed bare metal before they were virtualized, but there are a lot of cool workloads that uh, we were looking, uh, kind of skipping past in the uh, 
previously that we're now looking to add back into uh, the testing lineup. Okay, well this covers up on our initial look at uh, single processor uh, AMD EPIC 7F52 in the Gigabyte server, and we'll be back with more. Until then, thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.